Hey everybody, it's John with Freshwater Systems. Today I want to talk to you about, it's not necessarily an emerging issue, it's actually been building over years and that's microplastics. Microplastics, they're tiny little pieces of plastic that are ending up everywhere. They're all over the oceans, they're in the ground, they're even discovered recently in snow in the Arctics. So these microplastics are incredibly invasive. They're getting everywhere. And I wanted to talk about them today to outline what you can do about it, not only from keeping them from getting into your water, but also what we might be able to do to limit how much of this plastic is just ending up in our uh, waste stream. There's kind of three sources of these plastics. The primary is plastics that are made super tiny. For example, uh, cosmetics and little beads for uh, exfoliating, uh, those kind of things. My understanding is that these are being banned. Uh, the second and probably the most prolific source of these microplastics are mismanaged waste, throwing these bottles away, throwing them into uh, rivers and streams, out the window of your car. Uh, plastics do not biodegrade, so they just kind of grind down and eventually they become these tiny little particulates. So where do you find these microplastics? Well, it starts with where the plastics are most prevalent. And I don't know if you've ever heard of the Pacific Ocean Garbage Patch. This is a stretch of waste that's mostly plastic that's just floating in the ocean. And because of ocean currents, it has kind of gathered into a couple of spots in the Pacific Ocean, and there's five others in the oceans on the planet. And all of this plastic accumulates. Well, guess what happens? Sea life will nibble on these plastics. It's been found that sea turtles, actually a part of their diet, are plastics. And the, the plastics get into the food chain this way. And these plastics end up on our tables. They are also ending up in our bodies because Plastic, microplastics are being found in bottled water. In a recent study, they found that bottled water had on average 15 to 20 particulates of these microplastics in each bottle. My goodness, this, this is a, a planetary issue and it's something that we need to address as citizens of the planet. We need to limit our waste, we need to limit plastic bottles, we need to limit grocery bags, garbage bags, all these plastics. And I understand the plastic industry has to thrive. They make, on average, 400 million tons of plastic products annually. And since this plastic doesn't biodegrade, it's gonna be on the planet in one form or another for years and years and years. Microplastics are even found in human blood. Are they harmful? You know what? The jury's still out. Scientists are trying to figure out at what level these microplastics and accumulating microplastics are going to cause for us. Uh, can they get up beyond the threshold into your brain? Can they clog systems and organs? And that all is feared. So they know it's serious, and hopefully you know it's serious. Let's first talk about how do you protect yourself and your drinking water from these microplastics. Well, because they're so small, but they're still particulate, they're not chemically uh, dissolved, Me mechanical filtration is the best way to get them out, but they're so small, you need to have super fine mechanical filtration. A reverse osmosis system is a prime example of a system that filters particulate down to 0 0.001 micron. So they will be very effective at getting rid of these microplastics that might be in your water supply. Now the city water supply is gonna be more prevalent here 
because of the way that water gets to the city water supply. It's, it's usually a, a recycling process. The water goes down the waste pipes to the waste treatment plant and eventually ends up back at the water treatment plant and some of these microplastics will make that entire journey. Another uh, filtration method is superfine or like an ultra filtration unit that also filters down below the size of these microplastics. Now, just as a final thought beyond the filtration equipment is don't use bottled water. Use one of these filters and use a container like a, a stainless steel thermos to drink your water out of. The, the throwaway one-use plastic bottles is probably the single biggest source of the plastics in our oceans. An another thing is to limit our plastic use overall. Instead of using the plastic bags at the grocery store, get a handful of fabric bags that you can reuse over and over. And if we all did that, just think about the impact that we might have on our planet. I hope you got something out of this. Be sure and like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check out the reverse osmosis and filtration products on our website, freshwatersystems.com.